In today's video, we're checking out the Rode NTG5 shotgun microphone. I've got it right above my head, just out of shot here on this primary camera. You're listening to it being recorded on my Panasonic Lumix S5 using the DMW XLR adapter with no other post-processing. If you do see me swatting like this, the flies here are shocking. One landed in my mouth before, it, it wasn't good. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into it. Welcome to the channel folks, my name's Shane. If you're into audio, video tutorials and reviews, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. We just clicked over 25,000 subs, so thank you so much for all the support. Throughout the entirety of this video, you'll be listening to the Rode NTG5, except for when I do some comparisons, and then I'll talk about those comparisons at the end of the video and how this microphone performs. This type of microphone is designed specifically for a boom pole arm, but being that I don't have a boom pole operator with me right now, I'm using a mic stand and it works great outdoors in this particular situation. Although there is a lot to set up if you do plan on shooting on your own like this, it can also be used with great success in the studio. I'm gonna try it out in both different scenarios. Before we get going, a massive thank you to Rode for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. If you wanna find out more about this microphone, I'll link it down below. Here we go. The NTG5 microphone came with this complete recording kit. So if you're looking for an all-in-one solution for documentary filmmaking or for a studio setup, this makes a whole lot of sense. Including the box, we get the NTG5 microphone, a foam windshield, the PG2R grip, one RM5 microphone clip. We get a WS10 windshield, which used to be called a dead cat. We get the PG2R pro cable. We also get a vinyl zip bag. This NTG5 offers RF bias technology and conformal coating. This allows the microphone to perform well in high humidity situations. One of the great things about the design of this is the PG2R cable fits directly into the PGR2 handle, just like this. So you can see from the design, one side of the XLR goes directly into the handle here, and the other side keeps the tension off the cable being pulled and moved around. And you can easily just remove this if you so choose. It sort of plugs into the top. Additionally, we get some shock mounts for the microphone, which also helps reduce handling noise. When it comes to wind protection, the WS10, aka the old dead cat, works extremely well. This just slides straight onto the end of the microphone and it works beautifully up to about moderate wind conditions. Now this standard foam windsock will work better for any type of voiceover work where you might be talking into the end of the microphone. Rode were nice enough to send out their Boom Pole Pro. This is 100% carbon fiber and you can extend this out to three meters easily and it has locking sections here. So if you wanna lock it at any particular length, you can do so to unlock it, turn it towards yourself and you can close it right down. While the Boom Pole Pro is tough to say, it only weighs 535 grams and paired with the microphone coming in at only 76 grams, it's a super lightweight combination. I was really shocked how light all of this was once it was set up. Let's cover some of the features and benefits of this particular microphone. So if you wanna up your audio game, Rode dubbed this their broadcast grade shotgun condenser microphone, and it absolutely is. Not only is the audio quality great, but it also has a super cardioid polar pattern, which allows it to be very directional. This helps eliminate background noise. Let's take a look. Up next, we're doing a real world outdoor off axis rejection test. So guy across the streets using a sander or a wind blower or something like that. So if you can't hear that over my voice, the polar pattern is doing its job and I've got the microphone in the right spot. Being that these are very directional, it shouldn't be picking up too much of that horrible noise. Now I'll just stop talking. You may hear it when I stop talking, but it's still going right now. Can you hear it while I talk? I guess I'll find out in editing and I'll let you know. Another practical test just to showcase the directionality of the polar pattern is just by typing on a keyboard that's sitting behind the microphone. So as you can see now, the microphone's coming in on a different direction. And as I type away here, this is the kind of off-axis rejection you can expect. The NTG5 has a flat frequency response, which means it doesn't over-enhance the low end and it doesn't over-enhance the high end. It's a very balanced sound, making it very pleasing to the ear. And if you choose to re-EQ it in editing, it will make that job far easier. Comparing it to something like the Rode NTG3, which has an extended low end and that big full chesty sound, this will give you a very different sound to that. Both are great. So if you have a Rode NTG3 and you love the sound of that, then I probably wouldn't upgrade to this. But if you have something like the Rode NTG1, like I do, or a few other shotgun microphones, you'll hear a huge difference between this and other mics. 
Maybe one of my favorite things about the NTG5, other than its audio quality, is that it's got a 25 ohm output rating, which means you don't have to drive it anywhere near as hard on the same preamp. So for example, if I've got my NTG1 and the NTG5 plugged into the Rodecaster Pro, I have the NTG1 set to 40 on the preamp, and I have the NTG5 set to roughly 24 or 25 to get the same equivalent volume. This means if your field recorder or XLR adapter for your camera, for example, gets noisy, the more you turn up the preamp, you won't need to turn the preamp up as much with a microphone like the NTG5. Up next, we're doing an audio comparison between three of my shotgun microphones, starting with the NTG5. It's just out of shot above my head, the primary camera. You can't tell where it is, but it's just here. So I'm gonna keep all the microphones placed in exactly the same spot. I'm also gonna talk a little bit about the preamp gain to get all of them to sound comparable. And now I'm over to the Rode NTG1 shotgun microphone in exactly the same spot that I had the prior microphone, except I had to turn the preamp gain on my XLR adapter up to 12 o'clock from nine o'clock to get comparable audio signal. So you have to drive this microphone a heck of a lot harder than the NTG5. And lastly, over to the Saramonic Soundbird T3 shotgun microphone, the largest one I've got in my collection. Now this microphone has a whole lot of additional options over both of these, but it also comes at the expense of it being far larger and also far heavier. So if you want the lightest option, the NTG5 is by far the best. Now I also had to crank up the preamp gain a little bit more on my camera to get this one even volume wise, but I still like the sound of this. It'd be interesting to hear how they all compare. After listening back to the comparison between all three of these shotgun microphones, the clear winner, at least to my ear, was the Rode NTG5. It actually sounded far better on the low end than both of these and also had a far more pleasing top end. The Saramonic was second, the NTG1 was third. Now, of course, in post, you could get these to sound very similar to each other by matching EQ frequency curves and so forth. But when it comes down to it, if you just want to get great audio without the hassle, the NTG5 was far superior to both of these others. Let's wrap this video up by talking about my experience using this microphone. So for my particular situation in the studio, I basically ditched the wireless mics in here now because the freedom that comes from having a great audio source above my head and usually out of shot is awesome. As long as I remember that where it is and I don't talk the opposite way all of the time, it's going to sound great. So that all comes down to position. So for me, this works extremely well and it's a huge upgrade even over these other shotgun microphones that I still use to this day. If you're gonna be doing any type of field work like a documentary where you'll need an overhead shotgun microphone, the Boompole Pro mixed with this microphone is the perfect companion. They're super lightweight and it will get you exceptional audio quality. There's really only three reasons you might not choose this microphone over a lot of other offerings. One, you've already got a great shotgun microphone and you don't think this is a viable upgrade. Two, the price. The price of this is far more expensive than some of the others that I've currently purchased. Three, it doesn't have a high pass filter or a 10 dB pad, which is kind of like four things all up. But basically those are the things that you need to take into account. This microphone is plug and play. There's no extra buttons. There's no built-in battery. There's none of it. So you plug it in and that's what you get. But because the audio quality is so good, I think it'll check a whole lot of boxes. Thanks again to Rode for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. If you want to check it out, links will be below. Catch you soon. See ya.